y'all. It is um, Sunday, July 2nd. The time is 1552. Uh, I wanted to get out this uh, special video on my analysis of gold. Uh, I've got a commenter, I've got a longtime subscriber that wants um, an analysis of gold specifically. Uh, I, of course, trade the futures equivalent of that, so I'm not going to analyze it on the CFD chart. Uh, as I'm in the United States, I'm not allowed to trade CFDs. Uh, they are illegal since Dodd-Frank. They are unlawful. So anybody that's telling you that you can trade CFDs in the United States, you're not supposed to. You are not supposed to, my friends. You're not supposed to trade contracts for difference in the United States uh, since Dodd-Frank. Um, okay, uh, so we're going to start with the technical analysis view of uh, GCQ. This is the September delivery contract month. For those of you trading uh, CFDs, it is... Um, Uh, for those of you trading contracts for difference, it might, your price chart might look a little bit different with gold. Uh, if you're outside the United States, you can trade CFDs. I cannot, so I'm not even going to look at it because I can't trade it. Um, okay, a uh, monthly chart on gold, you can see that we've mostly traded efficiently. The candles are overlapping. Um, we do have this volume imbalance here on gold. I don't think I don't know whether we get there in the month of July. It would seem like a bit of a stretch to come back down to 1822. It is possible. We are inefficient here from this candle's open, which is 1838 spot four, to this candle's close, 1806 spot eight. So we are inefficient there. Looking at our bullish inefficiencies or our inefficiencies that are higher, we are wick inefficient, meaning thin trading all the way up into our May high. May high came in at 2102 spot two. Midpoint of that would be 2060 spot six. So we're looking for downside targets on the gold monthly, kind of a bearish scenario. I would say for our monthly chart, we're looking at 1822 spot six as that we have our inefficiency there. Uh, inefficiency to the high side, to the buy side would be 2060 spot six. So no immediate, you know, we're currently trading in a range here on the monthly chart. There are no immediate inefficiencies. Uh, it's like you can see in this box here that all of our, in the red box, all of our candles are overlapping, meaning they're trading efficiently. You have to look above and below the current range really to get into your inefficiencies. So I can't really read what price is doing on the monthly chart that well. I mean, we are coming into a volume imbalance here and inefficiency that might uh, invert. So, okay, if I had to tell you on the monthly chart, I would say that gold long term, we're probably looking back up at 2060 spot six. Looking at this chart, if this volume imbalance inverts, um, come down, uh, come down, come back up like that. Uh, so that would be my best guess right now. Let's go down to the gold weekly chart. See that gold came down immediately. I mean, you need to spot these things like subconsciously. Okay, see that we bounced off the volume imbalance here. We're trading higher. Um, exactly. So you can see that the close of this candle came in at 1902 spot one. The low of the month of June came in at 1900 spot six. I mean, guys, you ever think that these markets are not algorithmic to the core? Sometimes you just got to know what you're looking for. And I mean, come on, the guys, this is all computerized. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're going to trade perfectly. It doesn't mean that you're always going to interpret what the algorithm or what the trading algorithms are doing. What it means, though, is that you have a framework. You know what you're looking for. You're looking for inefficiencies and liquidity. Okay. I, with inefficiencies being first, like liquidity should come second. Um, okay, so I'm looking at some of the top step stuff. Uh, anyways, you can see that we came down to this uh, volume imbalance and we are right there. So overall, I would say gold is, you know, on the weekly chart. I think that our week of the next week is coming up probably here to this order block. 
It's not really an order block that's not paired with an inefficiency, but we'll just say these two green candles. Um, I would say that the week of July 4th, you know, we could reach to the open of this candle. That would be 1961 spot three. I broadly lean bullish looking at our weekly chart. Uh, knowing your ICT models, that means that Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or holiday shortened hours are probably going to be consolidation or down. Then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday might be looking up. So I do lean bullish here on the gold weekly chart. Daily chart, you see the same thing. We came down to this volume of balance. Price came right to it through a great deal of efficiency and difficulty. Gold is not, it's not my favorite thing to trade. You can see that most of the candles all the time are overlapping, right? Meaning that the market is usually pretty efficient. You got to catch gold at the right time. It's very manipulated. So, you know, for those of you Forex traders that are, you know, you really want to trade uh, gold, I think gold is difficult. It's mostly efficient. I mean, look at this, right? Most of the time, the candles are overlapping one another, meaning that they're trading efficiently. So you got to pick your, you got to pick your battles. So I do think that gold is probably uh, looking here at the daily chart. All right, let's remove those drawings. What do we see on the daily chart? Immediately, I notice this. This is a SIBI. Okay, SIBI right here. Balance price range SIBI. We're probably looking here at uh, my best guess here would be probably 1958. 1957 spot one probably looking at price in the next week of July 4th coming like right there okay I would say right there would be a good upside target downside target all right if gold wants to turn back down let's make our bearish scenario in our head we've got a balanced price range here balance price range right there so 50% of that balance price range we're looking at 1873 spot six I don't lean towards that but it is something you need to be aware of okay Balanced price range where you can see the price had a SIBI and a BISI right next to each other like that. Kind of looks like a V. Price is also going to be drawn to that. Midway point of that, or the consequent encroachment of this balanced price range, 1873 spot 6. Personally, I think that the way that Friday's candle closed would indicate to me probably looking at a weekly objective of 1958 spot 9. Uh, I'll go down to the 4 hourly chart since I've got commenters that are talking about it. Regular trading hours gap would also indicate to me 19, you know, midway point of that, 1958 spot six. Regular trading hours gap lower, again, same price, 1881 spot six. So one of the things that I'm going to make a video on, I'm going to pre preview it now. Um, when you are analyzing a price chart and you are applying the technical science of inefficiencies and liquidity, with inefficiency being first, Okay. You need to know where price is going. And where price is going is it's either going up or it's going down. And it's either going to be drawn to an inefficiency or to liquidity. And preferably you want to find inefficiency. Inefficiency is going to be the number one draw. It's going to be like bang, bang. It's going to go straight to an inefficiency. That's why my banner video is inefficiencies in the marketplace. That's why I'm always talking about inefficiency. That's why it's the number one thing that you'll hear me over and over and over harp again. Now liquidity is there. Your highs and lows do get breached and they are good targets for your profit targets. But when you're really like looking at like what is the most salient right now, what is the most important right now, it's got to be inefficiencies. It's got to be holes in the chart. That That's it. Holes in the chart. So we go down to our regular trading hours and with that being said, you know, we're looking at the exact same scenario that we did on the daily chart. 1881 spot five to the downside. And 1959 spot three to the upside. I am slightly leaning to the upside. You know, looking at our four hour candles, I would say it's more likely than not that gold does want to come up. But you'll notice that I'm creating a bullish and a bearish scenario in my head. All right. It's not because I'm trying to fool you or I'm trying to tell you that there's no predictive value in what I'm doing. If I am being proven wrong, all right, I think that the market, I'm leaning bullish. I favor the bullish side. But if I start to see price come straight down, I also have an objective to the downside. In fact, I have two objectives. Okay, That would also be 1859 spot three. I would say the lower regular trading hours gap is in unlikely. Go back to our daily chart, you don't see the holes in the chart, but they're exactly where I showed you that they were. So look at, watch this. All right, 
Look at the daily chart. You see how I said there's a hole in the chart there and there's a hole in the chart here? Four hour, there's an actual hole in the chart on the regular trading hours. So you're seeing how these inefficiencies, they look different. But it's, you know, price is going to be drawn to one of these two points next week. I would say more likely than not, like 60 to 70% right now, it's coming up here. Okay. But that being said, you know, if you start to see that gold is plunging, look for 1881 spot five. If you see it plunging further, look for 1859 spot four. And it's important that you create bullish and bearish scenarios in your head. So one, one more time to recap, monthly chart on gold, very efficient. Weekly chart on gold, you know, also very efficient. I would say 1961 spot three, that those two green candles up there. Volume imbalance on the weekly chart is also there. Daily chart, we've talked about this, same thing. 1958 spot seven to the upside. 1880 spot six to the downside. Gold is not my favorite instrument. You know that I prefer the NASDAQ. You can see the NASDAQ much fewer overlapping candles than gold. Gold is a very manipulated instrument. It's kind of like Bitcoin. That's going to be it. That's my weekly analysis of gold. Um, we've talked about why I'm not on the contract for difference. It is, it is unlawful for me to trade the contract for difference in the United States since 2008. I'm not supposed to do it. So we're on the futures contract. Uh, this is for the week of July 3rd to July 7th, a holiday shortened week. God bless. Bye-bye.